Foo Fighters, All My Life on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and uh, Carl Pilkington. Indeed. Genius Carl Pilkington, as yes. Heat Magazine said. Really? Is that what yeah. he's referred to now? Yeah, oh. yeah. Genius. Saying about people tuning in just to hear his games, yeah. such as Educating Ricky. Have you got some Educating Ricky for me? Got some education. I need some education, Carl. That's I like desperately that. need some education. I want to learn about Chinese kids that are born hairier than average. <laughs> I want to hear, hear about deaf girls that can hear after their mum hits their head against a wall. These are the things I need to know. I mean, I don't wish to be disrespectful. He doesn't look like a genius. He doesn't look like a genius. But then I don't know what a genius looks like. Exactly. Really. So, Steve. you know, I don't want to be an look, look at Einstein. Yeah. 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 His mum thought he was mental as a child. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that information from? That was in the Einstein book. If <laughs> 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 well, it was in the Einstein book, then it's absolutely true. <laughs> Which the, Einstein book is that? His theory and relativity? The, 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 big, the big book of Einstein stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the big bumper book of Einstein stuff. It's <laughs> yeah, uh, for yeah, a coach yeah. trip yeah. and you have to fill in, uh, yeah. E equals MC1 squared, <laughs> two, <laughs> fish, or three, hello, <laughs> and then it's multiple choice yeah. and you, uh, fill it, it's great. It's Did his brilliant. mum think, A, he was a genius, <laughs> B, mental? <laughs> <laughs> so most people go for A, but it is in Ooh. fact B. Ooh. She thought he was mental at the age of twenty-eight. <laughs> oh, Carl, oh. you never let me down. You never let me down. So have you got educating Ricky for me? Got educating Ricky coming up. You've got, got Rockbusters. Uh, we've got Rockbusters. Great as seen, book. as seen and talked about in Heat. <laughs> in <laughs> it's, Heat magazine, it's got really tough this week. Now we're not messing about anymore. Uh -huh. Right. Um, got some good prizes. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll talk about those later. Because right. uh, I mean, was it last week that you had the, the classic? Was it? Um, I can't remember. I, I'm paraphrasing, Carl. Apologies. Something like, I'm here in Texas. I've fallen in a puddle and my knee has got wet. Yeah. Wet knee Houston. Wet knee Houston. Whitney Houston. Yeah. And also, it was last week when there was a little bit of confusion over, uh, the one for Holly Valance. Right? Of course. Um. I don't think it was confusion. I think it was your error. No, yeah. No, no, it wasn't. And it was Holy Valance and you meant Pelmet. Ah. Then, one. Becky, who called up that time and yeah. said, oh, if you, you're getting mistaken with, uh, Pelmet, right, she sent me an email in a week yeah. saying I've done a bit of research. Yeah. It was my fault. I've made an error. Yeah. It is a Valance. Okay. And I know about Valances, as I told you last week at the very end, my auntie loves them. Yeah. Right? She, um, she makes them. She started off just like putting them on top of the, uh, sort of window around the curtain. Uh, and then she, she thought, oh, I can do more with this. Yes. <laughs> and she had a little coffee table that had magazines underneath and yeah. she said, I'm sick of seeing them magazines when I'm sat down. She, she <laughs> sounds, she sounds like a pilkin too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of seeing the magazines when I sit down! So she put a valance around the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah! She just got valances around everything now. Yeah. Right? Then, yeah. uh, next step, uh, she, she tapes everything. She never actually watches telly, she tapes it all. Yeah. Because she gets sick of listening to the adverts and that. Yeah. So she tapes everything, so she's got loads of videotapes and that. And the video used to get on her nerves when she was watching a film. She'd see the clock changing. Oh. And it distracted her from the film, so sure. she put a valance around <laughs> <that>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's genius! Yeah. So, that is or, really is it, or is it mental? <laughs> oh, no, Only Mrs. Know. Einstein can tell. I don't know. She's even made a little, um, Jack Russell look like a hovercraft. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Still, so it. everything's got a balance. If you, if you go round and you stand still for too long, the chances are <laughs> you'll <laughs> put a balance on your head. Yeah. This is the, 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 this is Auntie Who? Auntie Nora. And this is the one that farted for five minutes. <laughs> lest, lest our listeners forget. <laughs> lest we farted forget. for five minutes, called his mum, saying I'm farting. <laughs> Two minutes into the fart. She said about uh, two and a half minutes in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said I'm about two and a half minutes well, into well, the fart. Well, my mum said how long's <laughs> been going on for? She said, well, uh, it was about two and a half minutes before I called you. Yeah. And then it went on for a further two, <laughs> two and a half minutes or something. And, uh, <laughs> then it stopped. And, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't talk about it because there was a balance over the clock. Yeah, she Because it used to annoy her when she was yeah. on the phone that you'd put her <laughs> off, see, at so the time. She, it was she was guessing it was five minutes. This was one consistent fart. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't making a noise, it was just- Oh, it wasn't making a noise. Just gas. <laughs> <laughs> right. Endless gas. Mm. So, uh, there you That's go. fantastic. Well, we started off with a new one, a little bit of Foo Fighters. We like new and old on this show, don't Indeed, we? Indeed, we like to mix it up. I'd like to play to the Smiths from their, from their uh, debut album, um, I Don't Owe You Anything. I Don't Owe You Anything. The lads from, uh, Carl's hometown there. Indeed. The Smiths. Brilliant, that one. Wow. I went to Manchester, didn't I, the other day? Went up to Manchester for what a little corporate. Uh, it was all right. Yeah. Um, I, the, he went, um, wait till you get out. You see, Piccadilly, it's better than Euston. Right. right. It was. It, the, 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 you know, it was, it was nicer. I went outside and there was a ridiculous queue, uh, um, 
uh, and sort of one cab. Right, um, yeah. So, uh... Horse drawn. Yeah. yeah. And so I walked and it was okay, it was only down the road, it was a bit dark. It was wet and raining. Of Obviously course. it's the north. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, the I hotel know. was very nice, but no minibar. I've never seen that before. I've travelled all over the world to see them in a hotel without a minibar. <laughs> no, so no, I don't know what's, the going what's going on then, I don't know what's going on there. Um, and then I, uh, uh, I did this corporate gig in Old Trafford. The pitch was up, I don't know what they were doing, but um, you know, very impressive, big impressive. I think they're the British football club, aren't they? Carl? Yeah. You did yeah. a gig at where? Old Trafford. It was, in a, it was in a function room. Oh, there well, I thought it was the stadium. No, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not that big yet. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but I mean, oh, uh, you know, I can't really comment on Manchester. I do know that Liverpool was voted most important music city via poll. True enough. Um, so, uh, Carl, you're making noises while I'm talking. Yeah, but you do this all the time trying to wind me up. And I'm not, I'm not saying Manchester's the best place in the world, but what I'm saying is there's bits of it that I really miss. Yeah. Like last Sunday, right? When I'd, I'd met up with, uh, with Ricky, um, we had, uh, had spaghetti about bolognese, which was all right. Uh, and then I said to him, I said, I need some soil. Damn, I wish you'd invited me. It sounds <laughs> right, amazing. <laughs> so I need some soil. What, what do you think? You need some right. what? Soil? soil? Soil, yeah. I need to repot a plant, right? Yeah. So, um. You need to repot a plant? Yeah. yeah. I, oh, fair enough. So, um. I'm like, where, where, you, you can't see you these can't, shops yeah. in London. You can't Do you know what I mean? Saw. There's nothing around. I took him straight to one in my street. Yeah, yeah, but near your street and that's probably the only one in London. Well, you say that, Carl. No, it, d it does annoy me. Round my way, it's like, you know. You can't move for soil shops. <laughs> 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 you can't. There's earth. You can just pick up handfuls walking down the street. Yeah, incredible. Which People is... just lean over into someone's front garden. No, yeah. you can take the plants yeah. as well. No, but yeah. what I'm saying is, Go on. Manchester, there's loads of decent hardware shops. Yeah. Here. Um, you know, if you want a panini and a latte or whatever, you can't move for them. But for soil, I had to <laughs> go virtually how many miles away from me to carry that mm. soil home and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's not good. I mean, London's all right, mm. but if, if cities were sort of marked- It's, it's, it's neglecting the peat. <laughs> yeah, at, at, yeah. at market, yeah. really, is Well, there's it? barely, I mean, there's barely any mulch available well, for uh, well, in uh, central uh, London. I'm sick and tired of not getting a good decent compost of a Sunday. <laughs> Indeed. So, you know, I'm thinking of moving to the north. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where there is loads <laughs> of soil <laughs> and <laughs> gravel. Indeed. And animal shite. <laughs> well, uh, whatever. Yeah, so. Yeah, whatever. Sorry, you were gonna say if you're marking cities out of ten, what would you give, uh, London? Well, if you were marking them on, like, you know, on, on what they have. Right. It, as opposed to what? <laughs> well, as opposed to <laughs> how the you name. spell it. Say, like, I think the greatest city in the world is Rome. Okay. Like, it's pretty amazing. Mm. Yeah. Have you been? What? Yeah. Why do you think that though? Just because, like, you turn a corner and there's something there that's really old. Right. right. Yeah. Like, you're going down <laughs> Normal Street. <laughs> go, go and stay in a Derby and Joan Club. Yeah. No, no, no. But but it's like you're going down the road and then you turn a corner and like, like the Colosseum's in the middle of a like a busy road. Mm. It's like what's that doing there? Yeah, and yeah. And just when you think there's no more you turn another corner. It's boiling. almost as if that was there first. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. But do you know what I mean? London. Yeah. What have we got? You, you know Trafalgar Square's world sort of world known. And you go there what's that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of space there. Get one big B&Q. In Trafalgar Square. To, to, to cater for the whole of people who live sort of central London-ish. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd be happy, but what I'm saying is- What, with Nelson just popping up through the middle? Cause you can still see it, <laughs> couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great B &Q, idea. Uh, 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 so B and Q could be like the whole sort of flat thing and make it sort of grey so it looked like rock and then Nelson popping up- Make it up classy is what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stone clad it. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like you've made an effort. <laughs> exactly. And then you can pop in and then you can go out and go, oh look, Nelson's column. Oh look at that! Isn't now? Oh look at that! The victory, oh, defeat. That's fantastic. One of the greatest living. Yeah. I need some nails. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Kevin T. Bridge one stone. You say. But but why don't? Why isn't there more than than the, more than them shops? Because when I went into yours, every time I've been in there, I've been in there twice now. The first time was to get a shower head, right? <laughs> right. And I went in there, couldn't resist buying something else. I ended up getting some super glue as well. Why? <laughs> 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 Hey, right. big spender. And then, last <laughs> yeah. Sunday we went in there, got two bags of soil, not one, I bought two, yeah. Yeah. and I bought some scissors to cut plants with. Secretaries. Well, you don't- scissors. You never know when you want, you know, you might need more soil, I suppose. Well, mm. I've got- I've got stopped out now. Where'd you keep it under your bed? Sorry, this isn't going out, is it, this conversation? It's not going out on air. I got a feeling it might be. You're joking. We'd better play a record. Okay. Play a classic. I hate to say I told you so on XFM 104.9. I'm Richard Gervais, obviously, with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl- Genius Pilkington. <laughs> Absolutely. I was watching Carl, a bit of TV. Carl the Brain Pilkington. Yeah. The Brain. Brains. 
Yeah. Uh, I was watching a bit of TV last night, Rick. Um, Go on. And I, I had a little Children thought. Need? No, I, was, I didn't watch Children Need. No, um, I, missed I was watching treat. something. I think it was last night. It was a bit earlier. Um, I had a little thought for lads that might be out tonight. You know, on the yeah. r on the Raz. Yeah. Maybe they get a little bit of success with the ladies. Yeah. This was something that struck me as I was watching it. A lot of gentlemen, you know, when they're uh, when they're engaged in you know an act of you know relations with a lady, mm. they like to sort of you know think of an image or something that will prevent them from, you know, <laughs> and uh, you get you catch my drift. We're, we're men in the world. Grandmother's funeral is the <laughs> cliche, isn't it? Exactly. And I'll tell you what, what I think, uh, it should be. Rick Waller jogging. <laughs> I was watching Fit Club. I, I know. have never seen I'm, I'm, anything I liked like it, it when Rick. Harvey lost it with him. Oh, man alive. I mean, I, I know I slag him off, but I do, I don't really like him either. I just think he comes across appallingly. And I think, you know, when he just walked away when that, in that mid-conversation talking to that bloke, they're doing it for his I Good, no, really. But he's, 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 how, he's like 31 stone? I think he lost a bit. I think he's 29 now. Don't exaggerate, Steve. You're making him <laughs> sound like a fat. <laughs> but, um, but you know, I mean, oh, yeah. That was close, wasn't it? When having sex, you know, look. apparently, uh, thinking of, uh, Rick, w Rick Waller oh, helps. Oh, don't um, look what's happened. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is that the reverse effect? Yeah. Oh, no, me no, and Carl. No, if you're with a lady, if you're with a lady, apparently yeah. that. That works. I know, um, he's out now, isn't he? He's out. Is he, did he walk out? I, th I think so, I think that's it, from what no, I can- No, no, I think next week they kick him out, cos I read something about, um, he, they get rid of him next week, cos of his attitude, and first time I read it I thought he'd actually ate someone's hat. You lost it's me. He's got rid of him because of the attitude. <laughs> oh, everything you think of now is puns. <laughs> you can't get puns out of your head, can you? <laughs> oh, Carl, you're great. Look at his little face. He's so pretty. How long good. have you been working on that? How you've got to love, on? you've got to lo uh, give him that. That no, was that a is, real no, joke. Look genius. at his face. He knew it was funny. It was meant to be funny. He said it to be funny. And it was. Well done. I, well done. I'm just interested, I just want to dissect it, cos it was brilliant, and I'm wondering, how long have you been working on it? About two weeks. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was good stuff, it was worth the wait. Can I go uh, on now? Yeah. Oh, well done. <laughs> the Hattie Tude. Well, I don't Hattie think, I, I, there's only one band that can top that, another band from Manchester, Oasis. Oh. Vines, Ms. Jackson on XFM 104.9. I'm Mickey Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right. Getting towards that time where Carl really kicks into action. We've got the quiz. We've got Rockbusters. The quiz that's a bit like Blockbusters but mainly around music. Yeah, and a pun, a yep. scenario yep. based in wordplay by Carl. You know how good he is at that. Can I tell you uh, what the prices are this week? Because they're worth playing for. Please do. <laughs> okay, we got on DVD the Manic Street Preacher's Greatest Hits on DVD. The videos, I'm assuming. Uh, the film Human Traffic, it's a remix DVD version of that. Uh, I think we were giving this away last week. You've obviously got a bulk <laughs> stock of these. Groove Armada's Love Box, an album from them. Uh, the best air guitar album in the world ever. Uh, that's got the likes of Queen, Adams, Palmer, Leopard, Aerosmith. Idol. Um, I don't see it. I think Harrison. the Smiths should be on there. Uh, we got Purple, Wolf, Cooper, Top, <laughs> <laughs> Quo, and, uh, Back, Nickelback. <laughs> um, now there was another, there was another one around actually. I seem to have lost one of the prizes. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, this is, uh, you may see this advertised on TV, the Best Bands Ever album. And, uh, just, just imagine who this is aimed at. It's got, uh, Oasis on there, Nickelback, Coldplay, da da da. The Dandy Warhols, Bohemian Like You, in brackets, as featured in the <laughs> Vodafone TV ads. <laughs> then it's got Smash Mouth, Walking on the Sun, as featured in the Ford Fiesta TV ads. It's for people who didn't know they liked indie. Exactly, exactly. They, they go, I don't like indie, but you do. Do you like this? <laughs> Advert. Yeah. yeah. Do you it. like this advert? Yeah. Well, you like indie then? <laughs> I do! <laughs> I love indie! I can't believe it! That's great! Yeah. The Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It, as featured in the Vodafone TV ads. I really like indie! Do you love, uh, the T-Mobile TV ad? Yeah. You'll love this, it's got Royce Cup on there, which is featured <laughs> in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. um, so that's, that's, ca that's uh, me, uh, an album for people who don't like music. That's great, that's coming up, Rockbusters. But I also have a movie, cause you know last week I gave away Executive Decision. Yeah. That was on TV last night, yes. so you didn't receive my copy. But, 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 but well, they probably watched it before it was on TV. <laughs> yeah. A few days I before. I was clearing out, Rick, yeah. last night. I found another one, which might be just to entice people. Go on. 
what is it? Coming he's got right it. At you. He's coming out the bag. The Pelican Brief. Oh. Another arbitrary film choice <laughs> on VHS. <laughs> Pelican <laughs> Brief. Robert Washington. You know Get it's there. Get it now on VHS in before there are no more VHSs around. <laughs> it was six ninety nine. I'm giving that away as that's well. That's great, and that's his personal collection. That's from my personal collection. Did you see that gun picture, Carl? I don't think it's even rewound from when I watched it. Really? No, it's not. You can rewind that yourself. Brilliant. That's a little touch of Steve yeah, Merchant there. Exactly. Did you see that picture that you brought in? I do have actually. Can I see it again, Carl? Yeah, it's just a picture. Of, this is you carry it with you, do you? In your wallet. Well, no, he found it right last, last week. I was sorting it because I'm moving. I'm sorting all my uh, files out and that. <laughs> and uh, because this is the only school picture. He had got. one school picture taken when he was t was that ten? Nineteen eighty one. I was about eight and eight. eight and nine. Nine. Okay, tell the story. Why 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 is that the only school picture you had taken? Just because. Uh, no, I had them all. I was always had them taken, right? But my dad thought they were overpriced for what you get. Because uh -huh. really, he said that they, they ha the, sort of the whole idea of a good picture is like not only the person that's in it, but but like the surroundings. Yeah. So like, if you're on holiday, he'll look at me and he'll go, "Oh yeah, you're looking well, huh? What's that hill in the background mm. or something like that?" Mm. Whereas with <laughs> that's that, Rick Waller catching up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but all you get on on these school pictures is like a blue background, isn't it? Yeah. So he was like, "I'm not I'm not paying for that." Sure. And it was a big one. You get a bigger one than that, but that's just like a little passport size, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was one pound sixty. And, and he, he wasn't really happy paying that because he said you could get like some done from True Print for a, uh, a lot cheaper. So he could take himself. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and so, so did he so tell you at the time that was the last time he was paying for a school he picture? He said, I'll get you one because it's good to have a picture of you at school. Yeah. Because they hardly ever went and all that. Mm. Um, so <laughs> he said, like, <laughs> What's that in the background? That's from school, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't. I don't recognise it. <laughs> you got any interesting stories about it? Not really. <laughs> so, uh, I was a good looking kid though, wasn't I? Y you were, what are you doing with your mouth though, Carl? It looks like you're sort of, it looks like a bit like you're a ventriloquist dummy. What do you mean? Well, it looks like you're, you sort of scrunching your mouth up or, or pursing your lips or something. Do you not think? Oh, I mean, now you've got, dare I say it, very kissable lips. <laughs> <laughs> so in here, look how thin they are. Oh, look at those uh, little thin lips. It's like you. I'm smiling. That's a smile? Uh, that's what I didn't recognise that no, either. I didn't that was oh, a smile. I never, is that what you look like when you smile? Oh. Yeah. Oh. And what's happening with the head? Had your dad obviously... seen you smile before then? Well, I think that's why he wanted to buy one as well. That's like so he can remember what it was like. Right. Yeah, because I don't. I don't smile. When did you stop smiling? When did you? When was the last time you had fun and you just like, like happy go lucky? When? When can you remember when you, you had no weight of the world on your shoulders? I often think that because I don't sleep like I did, like when I was when I was a kid. I mm. had really good sleeps, and now I don't. Right. So I think. <laughs> Once but you've got a lot of things on your mind. You know, where can I buy soil? Yeah. I How can I confuse a computer by p t tapping in Y in the search yeah, engine? Yeah. Probably when I was fourteen, I was stress free. Uh -huh. Where? Yeah. When was the paper round? Probably when I was fifteen. Right. Is that, that's when it started, was it? I reckon. That's when I started getting stressed. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm just looking at the haircut you've got in the because uh, obviously I've not seen you before with hair and uh, it's an interesting mop. Um, uh, did you do you have that done at the barbers? No, my mum mum used to do it. Is she cut that? Right, yeah. Right. She did used to, uh, what she used to do, um, <laughs> you, you can't see it in that picture, but it was one where she did, um, a bit of a mess of it. I mean, it looks right. quite- I, I, quite I can't style. tell from this picture. <laughs> no, 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 that, that, that's one of the better ones. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Um, Were you bullied much? <laughs> <laughs> on, on one of them, she used to, like, use a better newspaper in front Brilliant. of my eyes so she didn't, like, stick these scissors in my eyes. <laughs> So well, newspaper <laughs> stops scissors yeah. every time. Yeah, because I think yeah. they, they use that for bulletproof vests. Yeah, the, t the tough fabric of a, yeah. a, a, a reconstituted newspaper will stop the scissor yeah. any time. No, definitely. I remember, because I know a lot of UN guys <laughs> when they're on patrol, they use some old copies of the Sun. <laughs> they put it in their pockets. Yeah, the Daily Star. Sorry, yeah, okay, yeah. So, uh, she, she used to, uh, used to always be on a Sunday night when, like, Songs of Praise is on or something, nothing right. was on the telly, just sure. before Last of the Summer Wine or something. Yeah. And yeah. she used to get the, What uh, a depressing time that was. It was. Having your hair cut and listening to Songs of Praise waiting for Last Summer Wine. Yeah. I always used to get depressed on Sunday nights. Well, I'll tell you and it wasn't because school was the next morning, it was because the telly was so shite. Mm. I think it was because school was the next morning, because Antiques Roadshow still does that for me. I see the Antiques Roadshow, I love it, but I'm just thinking I've got to go to school or work tomorrow. Yeah. The Roadshow, I wish they put it on the week. But I, I know, I've, no, I've never, I've never really had that. Uh, when I worked, I suppose. <laughs> I work now. <laughs> don't know, I don't know. Oh, what a giveaway. What a giveaway. So you were telling us story yeah, about so, so anyway, so she'd get the, uh, newspaper, right, and she'd stick it in front of me eyes. And, uh, <laughs> what does that say? Go on. <laughs> so, so she, she. You inherited a lot from your mum, didn't you? <laughs> 
<laughs> so she'd, she'd cut me fringe, right? Yeah. But then she'd go, oh, it's, it's not straight. It's not very yeah. good. So she'd go again and she'd keep going and the problem is- that why you're bold now? I was saying, is this- that you have got <laughs> hair <laughs> but she has to get it right yeah. and it, it takes her to the back of your neck to so get then, it even. Yeah. She- she sort of removed the newspaper and she was like, oh god. And I said, what? And she goes, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and like- What is this- does this happen every Sunday? No. Well, can I ask you, Carl, when she was cutting your hair in this picture, was- do you think she was maybe sidetracked by an interesting article in the paper? <laughs> and really yeah, wasn't yeah. paying attention or to what she was doing? Or did her favourite hymn come up? <laughs> yeah, and she's not Or Compo was rolling down <laughs> the hill. <laughs> in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I ended up with like, you know, a fringe sort of on the back of my head because yeah. she just kept going further and further. Sure. But, so uh, When did you start going to that barber that was on the railway station? <sighs> Must have, that's when I started work. So, you know, sort of 16, 17. Okay. And is he the one that said you have the hair of a Chinaman? He's the one who's, yeah. He sounds like a wise man. Oh, well, no. I, can I just stop? I think maybe, maybe we should play a tune, but maybe you could bring in some photos next week, Rick, and we can talk about them on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm just gonna do a card trick. Right, take a card. <laughs> Any card. Yeah. Right, look at it. Uh huh. Is that your card? That's Boy with the Arab strap, uh, Bell and Sebastian. Cunning next, educating Ricky. Excellent. You too, Electrical Storm. Steve. Am I mental or have we been playing some great tunes We've today? We've been playing some great tunes. You're not mental. You're on a genius. XFM. <laughs> yeah. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington in the chair now. The, um, oh, the talked about, the acclaimed educating Ricky. Right, well, just in case anyone's new, doesn't mm. normally listen, yeah. um, basically, I'm educating Ricky. Yeah. Uh, do a bit of research in a week, find stuff, news, history. Anything that's interesting. Um, three stories, I give them a nice little headline. You take your pick. Yeah. Between now and three, you're gonna learn three things. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> the headlines are, um, I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> <laughs> give us that again. I'll be no buying one of them. Nice, okay. Yeah. Uh, Dream. we've also got, uh, Hippopotter News. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, uh, chicken you believe it. <laughs> chicken you believe it. <laughs> well, well, I'm gonna go for Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus? Hippopotamus. Yeah. Right, well this one, it's, uh, uh, I'm not gonna take the credit here. I heard Christian talking about this on Breakfast, right, cause it's a good, good, uh, good story that happened. Um, basically, I don't know if I told you about it last week when we were having our spaghetti, but, um, <laughs> oh, I think you did. Right, I know this... what it is. I know what this is. Okay, I've not heard this. <laughs> right, there's a little midget. Right, there's a circus. I'm loving it already. Circus going on somewhere. I think it was in America. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> is that present day or old times? I'm talking like in the last three weeks. Okay. Right? Uh, little midget. Um, uh, circus, really <laughs> packed out show, people are loving it. Um. <laughs> Steve, you're asked the same question I did, I know. <laughs> so, um, so there's a little, little midget jumping up and down on a trampoline. <laughs> That's what a circus is! <laughs> Right. I'm taking money to see it. So everyone, everyone's clapping, and he's getting carried away. Because um, <laughs> he can't believe he's like, he can't believe they're loving it. I didn't know they'd like a little person on a trampoline, but they love me. But you know what it's like when uh, if there's a crowd of people sort of encouraging you to sort of go higher and stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure he knew he was it was getting out of hand. <laughs> But he was jumping and he was coming down the road going, hi, yeah, and he's going really high in the air, right? So he's, he's doing this, crowd are clapping, there's a hippo, right, just sat next to the trampoline getting ready to come on and do his act. Oh, right, I thought he was in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> there's a hippo getting ready to do his act, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the he's a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he's sitting by the trampoline waiting to do his act? Because he's- Why do they sit in the dressing room and they go, five minutes, <laughs> Mr. Moss, five minutes, Mr. Moss. So anyway, right, <laughs> so the hippo's there, uh, <laughs> He's getting annoyed, is he, cause this, cause the midget's he's eating going, into his toe. I follow oh, this? Yeah. Gonna, this is really yeah. annoying. They're gonna be, yeah. oh, yeah. no. So, <laughs> he's thinking, <laughs> he's already done the trampoline, my pogo stick act is never gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. So there's a hippo waiting. Uh, this, this, see, it's a great story, and I just know he embellishes it or it gets slightly wrong. Go on. So, so there's a midget jumping up and down. The hippo's yeah. getting annoyed. He the crowd are going the mad. The midget's mental. loving it. Can't believe his luck. Although we think you think he probably knows he's dicing with danger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, next thing you know, they're all saying hi, hi, hi. He gives it one big, like, heavy sort of landing on the trampoline. Goes really high. 
but goes off at a funny angle. Oh. Hypotenuse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and sort of flies <laughs> off. Hypotenuse! Hypotenuse! Sure. Flies off at a funny angle. Oh dear. Hippo's there, swallows him whole. <laughs> Crowd are clapping, thinking that's why the hippo was waiting there. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> It's not rubbish though. But I mean, no, maybe the, uh, there was an accident in a, uh, a circus with a midget and a hippo, eh? But at no point was this hippo waiting to go on going, come on. The midget flew off at hypotenuse and landed in the hippo's mouth and was swallowed whole. <laughs> this well, is, this is what you embellish it. That is great. And what's I that? have to say though, Rick, when I heard midget trampoline hippot hippopotamus, I was thinking actually waiting to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe? I mean- It is a- that- 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 you should never put those three together. <laughs> never! It's- it's a recipe for disaster. It's Everyone knows that. Midget trampoline it, Thomas. <laughs> are you mental? You're asking well, for trouble. Well- You was... know when he told me it, he said, and the midget, he didn't- he didn't mention it, Thomas. <laughs> and he said, the midget went on and soon he fell off and the hippo at him. <laughs> and I said, sorry, what was the hippo doing there? He went, it's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a circus having a hippo. No, <laughs> what do hippos do? What can they do? You can't train them, can you? <laughs> what do you want to do? Aren't oh, they like very deadly? They're yeah. huge, aren't you they? You can't have a hippo in a circus. Are you sure? You're not thinking of Zippo. <laughs> He's neither clown. Yeah. He no, 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 and it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't some sort of, where Zippo was eating a midget and it's, it's some sort of horrible sexual act. No, it was definitely, I heard it on breakfast, right? Um, oh, okay, it definitely, sorry. It's, no, it's definitely fact. Yeah, no, okay, right, truth. okay, good. Uh, well, let's play a record then. So, um, uh, I'd like to play a, a classic Springsteen, we're all fans of Springsteen there. This might be his debut album, I'm not sure, Greetings from Raspberry Park. I think it is, yeah. Um, New Joysy. Um, and this is Growing Up, it's great, it's classic. Mm. Springsteen and Growing Up off of, uh, Asbury Park album. Mm -hmm. uh, great. They make you feel good, Springsteen, oh, don't they? he's a joy. He's an absolute joy. Uh, Rockbusters. Well, this, what, this, what all, this is what this they're all what reading and writing about. Absolutely. Um, before you get the clues, let me just remind you of the prizes you're playing for. We've got the Manic Street Preacher's Greatest Hits on DVD. We've got the film Human Traffic on DVD. Uh, we've got the Best Air Guitar Album 2, uh, on CD. Uh, Groove Armadas, is this their current album? Yeah. I guess it's not selling very well, they're still trying to promote that. You can have that as well. If you are a fan of the Ford Fiesta TV ad, of the Vodafone TV adverts, you will love the- You will uh, love- you <laughs> didn't think you liked Indy. <laughs> well, you do. <laughs> exactly, and that's got, uh, Feeder and Travis and Badly Drawn Boy and all sorts on there. Plus, my own copy, six ninety nine. it cost me, uh, The Pelican Brief, starring Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington, if you've not seen that. Panned and scanned on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what right. are the clues? Do you what know what a pelican, uh, I read the other day that has mm -hmm. to turn its head upside down to eat? Give us the clues. So, Rockbusters- Well, let me just explain. A, a bird, a bird has a, has a gullet, an esophagus and a gullet, it's all in one thing. It hasn't got peristalsis, which is the movement that we have that can make food. Uh, so a bird has to- can only rely on gravity. Yeah. So, it- it has to have its head up and has to shake, it can't eat- You were gonna it. say that, weren't you, Carl? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Rockbusters, um, you mentioned it earlier, one of last week's was, it's a cryptic clue and then some initials. I was in Texas, I fell in a puddle on my knees, knees got wet, uh, WH, Wet knee Houston. Yeah. That's the sort of thing, thing we- The use of the with. word knee twice there in the cryptic <laughs> clue <laughs> and in the final answer. And the word answer. wet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is wit. Right. So fine. Good. So, um, there's three of them. It's email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Sure. Load of stuff to win. Here they go. Right, the first one. I'm writing these clue. down. Go on. Making it of them. Um, the fella has only got one badge left. <laughs> <laughs> the fella has only got one badge left. Yeah. What are the initials? That's just E. Just E? Oh, just E. Just E. The okay. fella has only got one badge left. This is either a solo artist or a band. Yeah. Um, second one. The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. Say that again? The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. Yeah. What's M the initial? M D. M D. M D. And finally, I really, really, uh, I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That's M. No, give, I think us that, give us that one again. I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. And that's right. M. I right, know I've got that one. Right. Okay. So that's great. That's great. That's lovely. 
So, uh, yeah. That's great. I think, I think the, the second and third one's quite easy. First one is a killer. Is it tricky? Yeah, it's a tricky one. So, uh, ricky.gervais.xfm.co.uk and what, we pick a winner out at about quarter to two or something Quarter like two, that? yeah, absolutely. No, quarter to three, what am I talking about? Quarter to three. Yeah. So, uh, so there you go. That's dynamite stuff, well done, Carl. Excellent. More, uh, educating Ricky next. Yeah. Beck, Lost Cause on XFM 104.9. Wow. Carl. We haven't had a lot of emails. They're tough. I'm struggling. Yeah. I've, got, I've got one, got one. and I, 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 I'm struggling with two, but I know one of the words, but I can't think of the band that fits it unless the clue's wrong, and I've got no idea with the first one, E. Give us oh, some again. Just, just quickly again. recap. Number one, the fella has only got one badge left. That's E. Uh, second one, the unmarried, uh, lady is a friend he out with. That's MD. And, uh, the last one, I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That's M. Well, so, uh, Ricky, what is it, Ricky? Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. So keep those coming in. If there's no winner, we don't know whether to give it to the person who gets the most right first, or have a massive rollover. And uh, what a Christmas booty that would be, as Carl said. Mm. All those. Imagine what you could have. Uh, oh, uh, indecent proposal, maybe. <laughs> who knows? It, you who know knows? what I mean? I've got some real junk, so I can bring that in. Yeah. It, the mean machine. Imagine with someone Vinnie this Jones. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This Christmas, I can't believe. It. Oh, I, thank you so much for the Pelican brief. I noticed yeah. you left the price on. And I, uh, it's on VHS as well. <laughs> oh, great! Brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah, um, this, so this is perfect Christmas gift, isn't it? Yeah, really? it's great. Okay, it. now um, Some so that's going. That's going. That's Christmas going gift. on. That's a big, big, <laughs> big prize. It's a big weekend prize on XFM. Yeah. Educating Ricky, part two. Right, what's the, what's the clues right, left? Well, we've, uh, we've, we've got left, uh, the headlines, I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> yeah. And we've also got, uh, chicken, you believe it. Chicken, you believe it. <laughs> so, <laughs> they're the two that are left. Which one's right. you going for? Chicken, you believe it, is not that picture, is it, in it, that we saw? Which picture? The bloke with the... No, 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 right, no, Right, no. okay. God, um, that was bad. Right, okay. Um, um, so... I was about to explain we that. We can't really discuss this on air, can we? Well, we can. Um, uh, Steve brought in, Carl, the best book ever, which is, what is it? I, I found it when I was moving house. It's an FHM publication, and it's kind of like lots of grotesque pictures and stories and like the book of the- a, a book of freaks and weirdos and And grotesques. Carl opened it and the first one was like- At the back. At the back. The well, back. you couldn't but believe your luck, could what you? Was it, what was it? What was number 50? A, a bloke with two heads. And he said, what's number one? Yeah. And then number six, there's a bloke who's a squid or something. Uh, octopus. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's loving it. Uh, At number one, he said, well, it's just a fella under a rock. And I went, oh no, read on, I think I know about this. And it's the fella that was found, w he caused a landslide while having sex with a chicken. And they pulled him <laughs> off and there he is, the chicken owner. Right, so Carl so could not believe his luck. So it's not that. Chicken, you believe it? I love that one. You're then. going for that one? Yeah. Right, well, we've talked a lot on the show about, um. We talked a lot on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, about <coughs> animals without heads. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we haven't! We've been, no, we talked about cockroaches could live without a head for well, seven days. Yeah, we talked about that. And then, of course, there was the, um, <laughs> the well known one about the, uh, the fella who had his head cut off. And he, he, he blinked said, in the he said to his head. mate, count how many times I blink when my head comes off. Yeah, we, as as you, when, when you told it to me, you said his head came off. And he said, <laughs> as he said, the basket, said, quick, count how many times I blink. <laughs> and it was Nick Frost that had to go, no, Carl, no, he, he said it before. I went, in there. Uh, that was, that was lovely. So, uh, yeah, we've talked quite a lot about things, heads coming off. Go on then. Well, this one. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> back in 1945. Oh, he looked up the date. He's got a specific date, uh, Wow. Mate Jonathan sent this one. You know him as well. It's lad at the BBC, right? He emailed this one in. Mm. So, thanks for that. Um, chicken. It's called Mike. There's, There's a chicken uh, called, sorry, I, I missed a bit there. There's yeah, a chicken, chicken called Mike. A chicken called Mike. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, what happened was, it was living on a farm, mm -hmm. right? Loads of chickens knocking about, <laughs> and uh, the owner of the farm is like, you know, getting ready for tea, and his wife says, uh, "Go out and get a fresh chicken because mm. me, uh, my mum's coming round." Mm. So he thinks, "Well, <laughs> I, I, I want to get a good one in because uh, I want to impress her." Because yeah. back then, even then, they wanted to impress the mother-in-law on that. Uh -huh. So they said, "All right, I'll just nip out and get one." So he sees, uh, he sees Mike, chicken running around. Is this during the war or after the war? 1945. I'd, I'd say that was after. No, it ended. Well, it no. ended in 1945. Yeah, okay. September. Go on. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, chicken's running about, he thinks that one lo that, you know, that looks alright. I yeah. love that one. Mighty. So he picks it up, um, and he cuts his head off. Oh. 
puts it on the block, cuts its head off, runs about a bit, like they do. Um, he thinks it'll stop in a minute. Keeps running about. Hmm. And what's going on here? Right? He's, he's, he's now like chasing a chicken without an head. Yeah. He's saying he should die in a minute. Anyway, doesn't die. Chicken's walking around with no head. Um, lives for 18 months. Yeah. Chicken with no head. Yeah. What do you now, think of that? Well, I'll tell you, I've heard this story before, Rick, and, uh, my, the explanation as I understand it was that, um, certain vital cords, spinal cords, weren't severed when the head came off. So yeah. that was why it continued to, to yeah. live. Yep. I don't know if that sounds plausible. It's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, how did it take on, uh, protein and energy? The fella who yeah. owned it, he said, well, hang on a minute, he said, I could, I could kill it now. But I've got a wonder chicken here. But he's thinking, it must really want to live. Sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if it survives that, they sort of got something here. Yeah. So we, uh, what he does, he gets a little, um, eye droplet thing that he used to use on it. Obviously not, not anymore, right? And he filled it with grain and water, and it had a big hole in its neck where its head used to be. <laughs> and he, uh... <laughs> Incredibly. And he dropped. You know what? There's, there's. I mean, that that is possible then. If it, you know, without, without infection, without, 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 without infection, if he was taking on things, it is, it is possible, right? Why? <laughs> Why what? Why did he do it? How cruel is that? I mean, that was not cruel because the chicken obviously, you know. He said he said if he thought it was a bit fed up, he would have killed it. He said, but right. he was running around quite happy. Well, it wasn't <laughs> fed up at all because it had no brain. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, I'm just saying what. It what was I nothing. Mean? It was just it was just sinew and nerves and electrical impulses breaking down energies, right? That's all it was. It, it didn't have a brain. So it was- but I- I'm worried about the psychology of keeping a pet without a head. <laughs> I'm worried more about what the farmer was thinking than the oh, chicken. I tell you this, what I'm- uh, the question I'm asking is, was the mother-in-law impressed? <laughs> I mean, that's oh, why he's out. That's why he's out to shot this Mike's is, head This off. is lovely, but it's just the head where you don't kill a chicken like that all at once. <laughs> I thought we were having chicken for dinner. Come and look at this. <laughs> running around the yard. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, dear. So, there you go. You've learned something there. Yeah, I have learned something. Yeah? Yeah. So, the, one more. That farmer, I have learned that farmer was very strange indeed. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I have to say, to be fair to Carl, I have a feeling like when I read it, the reason he kept it alive was as a novelty. He sold, he, you know, he, he got charged people to come and see the incredible headless chicken right. called Mike. Right. So, <laughs> here we are. Right. That's great. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> tune, Steve? A tune, yeah. Um, I just thought uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more from uh, that N.E.R.D. album. We played some of this from uh, from there when it first came out many, many moons ago. Since then, it's gone on. It's won awards, all sorts. And obviously, N.E.R.D. now, Nerd, as they're sometimes known, kind of big producers. They're producing Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, all kinds of people. But this is a track from their uh, album. I've heard they're wicked. Uh, they are indeed. <laughs> and this is called Things Are Getting Better. Thanks. Oh. N.E.R.D. Uh, from their album In Search Of, and that's Things Are Getting Better. After the break, we got, uh, more Educating Ricky and the results to this week's Rockbusters. And Richard Ashcroft. Oh, dynamite. Richard Ashcroft, check the meaning on XFM 104.9 on Wicked Device with me, Steve Merchant. Carl just remembered a little story he was excited to tell you. Okay. Go on. Oh, are you gonna tell him? Oh, okay. Um, w when we went into this cafe last week after um, Carl had got his soil. We got two big bags of soil. I was going, get a bag. I mean, and he, uh, he was, and I can walk home. After about ten yards, he was going, oh, my arms hurt. So he had to get a cab. So we stopped in this cafe. He had spaghetti bolognese. You were loving it, weren't you? It was good. It was a good little day out. And there was a woman that worked there, and she sort of, st I could see her sort of looking at me. And she said, uh, and then she goes, I said, are you off the telly? And I went, um, uh, yeah, yeah. She went, yeah, Chris Moyles. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. And I just laughed, and we both started laughing. She went, no, sorry, I don't, uh, I don't know, I'm not, because what's your name? And I went, and I had to say it, I went, R Ricky Gervais. <laughs> she went, oh, no. She went, oh, the thing in the office. I went, yeah, yeah. No, the yeah, funny so, thing was, no, she said, she went and said, Oh, no, I saw you on, on Jonathan Ross. Jonathan Ross, that's it, yeah. So she'd obviously watched the Jonathan Ross show thinking, Chris Miles has, you know, lost his looks a bit, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I found funny, the fact that she must have watched it, yeah. it thinking yeah. that- Yeah. Yeah, she went, no, I saw you like, I saw you the other day, and I was like, yeah, yeah, she went, oh. And then we were still sort of laughing, I was thinking, she went, oh, sorry, I was going, no, it's fine, it's fine. I was thinking, yeah, imagine that, just like, oh, God. great. There's not a better one to pick. That's just <laughs> appalling. Oh, that was lovely. It's the second time as well. That you've been mistaken for Chris Moore? Yeah. 
You yeah. Know? Oh man, you've yeah, got to feel I've, bad I've about had, that. I've had Miles, I've had, um, uh, Vegas a few Johnny times. Johnny Vegas, yeah, I can imagine. Um, that. so, yeah. Do you think, like, people are going up to Miles going, you, uh, you do that thing about working in an office? Yeah, I hope, well, don't know. I don't know whether I hope that or not. I don't um, know, it depends what he answers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, I like. I thought you were going to say that. Uh, are you Chris Moore's? No. no. What's your name, uh, Ricky Gervais? Uh, never heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> That'd yeah. be brilliant. <laughs> so uh, yeah, okay, right. Educating Ricky, Educating number three. Ricky, yes. Well, we've got the emails in. We've got the emails in. Yeah, yeah people are starting... finally. They're finally trickling in. I think people okay. are People have but... got the full three right, but I mean, it's still worth emailing in because we never know who we're going to pick as a winner. I'll tell you what. We've still got fifty minutes before we uh, give the prize out. So let's give this. Give them again. Just give us a quick uh, right. run there because I think these are these are these are tantalising. They yeah, really yeah, are. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the first <laughs> one, the fella has only got one badge left. Yeah. That's E. The second one, the unmarried lady is a friend to eat out with. MD. Mm. And the third one, I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That's M. Excellent. All right. Ricky so at xfm.co.uk. You can win all kinds of prizes. Educating Ricky, right, number three. Final one. You've had, uh, Hippopotamus. Love you've had, you had chicken, you believe it. <laughs> and the, the last one is, um, I'll be no buying one of them. I love that one. All right. Um, interesting one, this. I, th this, I mean, I spent, Probably three days looking for this stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> and another one that I came across, right? And um, I was going to use. I was what a, bit a like, great life you've got! I was just, you know, going on the internet and that. And I also look in magazines. Found a story <laughs> about a bloke <laughs> who um, I don't know. He was messing about with a chainsaw. And he's, he's <laughs> 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 oh. I don't know. He's messing about with a chainsaw. Um, he was juggling a midget. And, uh, whilst well, taking and his alligator for a walk. And, um, go on. And his arm, uh, come off, right? Come off! What do you mean his arm come off? The chainsaw took it off. Oh, yeah, so okay. Like, oh. Again, it's anyway, the going, oh no! Oh. So, uh, there's a picture of him on a exercise bike, sort of just with a, a little stump sort of balancing, but he's getting on with his life, he's happy and everything, everything's fine, he's not complaining, it's his own fault, he's got no one to blame, right? So anyway, he goes to the doctors and the doctor said, I can do something there. So he goes, well, it's all right, you know, I'm, I'm getting by all right, don't worry about it. And he goes, no, no, we've got an arm in, right? We can, um, we can attach that, a real arm, from someone who's, I think, they've passed away or lost an arm or something. And, uh, <laughs> They lost an arm and didn't want it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I'll have it. Are you using that? <laughs> yeah. No, because I know someone. Because <laughs> I know a bloke, actually. Yeah. Well, can't you just put this one back on? <laughs> well, it's first come, first serve, really. I was just, I, listen, I was just building a bionic man. <laughs> We've replaced one arm with a robot's arm, so we've got a spare one. <laughs> so, the doctor's going, let, let me put it on. He's like, well, oh, all right then. <laughs> so, so. I'm grateful, do, bastard. So, he does the operation. <laughs> right? <laughs> Everything's fine. He's loving it. He's, he's happy again because he said he can brush his teeth. Right. Okay. If this is if this is going to be <laughs> he's something loving like it again because now he can brush his teeth. Right. If this is going to be, and it was a leg, or no, no, no. it was a chimp's arm, <laughs> or, or it was the arm it of was, a killer. It was yeah. It was two left arms. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to s kill you. Oh, let's let's leave it then. <laughs> what is so, it? What's the answer? No, it's not that. I'm just. What missing. is? Okay. Right. Right. So um. <laughs> So he says, uh, go on and do it. So he, s he, he sews it on and, uh, like I said, he's happy, he's brushing his teeth, he can have a pint in the pub, he's lifting a pint with it, all mm. his mates are happy for him. Uh, it goes on for about two years, everything's fine. Then it all starts going flaky. Oh, I knew it would. Right. Was it made of chocolate? All right. So it all goes all like gammy and then for some the reason- The arm going gammy. It goes gammy and it gets longer. <laughs> <laughs> of course it does. So there's a picture of him, right, stood in the magazine. He stood there with his arms by his side. Um, one arm's normal. The other one is like past his knees. <laughs> it's he can pull his socks up without bending over. So it's is really this going to be? They gave him, they gave him the arm of an eight-year-old child who would have been the tallest man in the world. No, he just said, "Oh, what am I going to do?" And the doctor said, "Oh, there's not much we can do," and left it. <laughs> What so, a, what, what, wait a minute, you can't leave it there. That's not a story. So, Carl, that's what? You've got story. to tell us the explanation. What, what, what? Was what? it an incredible plastic arm? An incredible expanding arm? Did he fight crime later? No. Well, that's the end of the story. You've got no yeah, scientific explanation as to why- That's why I didn't pick it. But you just told it to us anyway! Yeah, but I'm just saying the sort of knowledge I come over when I'm looking for the good knowledge. <laughs> yeah? So <laughs> why did his arm grow? Good. Why did this arm grow? He must have had an adult arm. They couldn't have given him an arm. 
I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just what I'm. <laughs> it's rubbish again, it's isn't not, it? Well, well, I don't. It's an interesting story, but you should have. It's not, read, and it, it's rubbish. But you it didn't have read to the end. There was photos. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you should have read to the end of the article, Carl. No, I did, and he said that you know he's not happy and he wishes he he wouldn't have had it done and all that and you know. Are you sure this wasn't entirely unexpected? No, seriously, he was saying, you know, his teeth are nice and clean again because he could brush them and that, but his arm's getting in the way. <laughs> Ru <laughs> ruining his shirts and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so leave that. Let's play, let's play a tune, let's come back with the next one, because I love the fact that that- This is like Ronnie Corbett telling one of his jokes. That's ironic. <laughs> that wasn't even the story. He was gonna tell oh, us. Oh, play it, my God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's alright, isn't it? Travis? Level come through, mm -hmm. quite like that, That's on right. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington in the chair. We've had the, uh, we've had the answers in. It's Rockbusters. Mm -hmm. It's the results. Yeah. Carl, yeah, yeah. give us the winning answers. Right, Steve, you search for a winner. I so will. At random. We can yep. slip into that. So, the first one was, the fella's only got one badge left. I don't have no idea. The initial was E. Go on. Will I get out the answer now? Yeah, Steve? give the answer, yeah. I think on. you should. That was Elastica. <coughs> yeah? E Elastica. The band Elastica. Oh, I'm right, not doesn't sure- work. No. Doesn't work. The word- the word sticker and the and the ba yeah. and a badge are not interchangeable. And it's not his last sticker, it's Elastica. Yeah, but, like, Elastica. So, <laughs> someone's got it. Oh! Um, so, so- so say a different word and it works. <laughs> oh, so if the band is Elastica, then it works. <laughs> God, if only Justin would have named it different. If she'd have just gone, let's call it Islastica, <laughs> then we'd have, yeah. Second one. Um. What was the clue? The unmarried lady is a friend he out with. Go on. That's Miss Dynamite. Miss Dynamite? Doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, but it's been running for four weeks. We've done- we've done the obvious Doesn't ones. Doesn't work. Like, Doesn't work. Miss Dinamite. Again, if she'd have called herself <laughs> Miss Dinamite, it would work. She didn't. <laughs> See, what, what, what's happening is pop stars are letting you down by naming <laughs> themselves incorrectly for your clues. Those don't work. They don't count. <laughs> and the last one- Miss Dinamite. I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That yeah. was M. Yeah. That was Madonna. Yeah, Madonna. I'm- I'm gonna give you that. That work- yeah. <laughs> Right, um, that's the end of that feature, until you can get ones that work. Okay, so you won't hear any more of that, because <laughs> it's rubbish. You're running out already. <laughs> I do- so do you just think of the first three things that come in your mind and make them fit? Just no, think of three bands and make a clue, and if it fits, it fits, if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I just- I just went through the- Rubbish. Well, it was rubbish. Whatever. Right, play a record. Hang on, we've got a winner. We have. Uh, actually, you say all this, Rick, but lots of people got them right. Which, yeah, so. I don't know what that proves, really. I don't know if that says, you know, you're the tosser or- Or they they're or as stupid as Carl? One or the other. Okay. But, uh, I'm gonna give it to Simon and Daisy and Hitchin. They, uh, got the right answers, and, uh, well done to them. They get the Pelican Brief and some <laughs> other treats. <laughs> Serves you right. <laughs> I look forward Serves to Serves you right for understanding Carl. <laughs> Swade's new one. Obsessions. On XFM 104.9. Well, uh, I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgrim. Well, Carl, that's- that's about it, and, uh, we got sidetracked on the last Educating Ricky. You telling me about a man whose arm grew. Well, something- well, something went wrong. I'm not saying it's, it grew, just saying- <laughs> What, 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 what? The rest went, of him shrunk? It went long. <laughs> it uh, went long. <laughs> what, is that growing now? What do you mean it went long? Uh, did it grow, or what, did it come loose? That's- that's what I was thinking. Oh, so it was hanging by a thread that's made it look long? Yeah. Within the skin? It's like how you can stretch a pair of tights if something is too heavy or- Arms aren't very much like tights. They so, are very so much the like one, tights. So the one that we didn't get round to on Educating yeah. Ricky was, uh, I'll be no buying one of them. Go on. Um, are you familiar- mm. <laughs> With okay. the- with the same white elephant? Something is a white elephant? Yeah. Yeah, I oh, think so. hold on. You phoned me last night and said, what does white elephant mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I told you. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I know where it came from, but I just was wondering what it was about. So how- in what way is educating Ricky, you <laughs> calling me up and asking me something? <laughs> well, do, do you know how it came about? You've given away some of the secrets of the show there, it would appear. I didn't realise he was phoning you for information. 
Well, he just asked me what, what the term white elephant meant in sort of like colloquial. <laughs> did he say, did he say, there's, why, why, why are you interested, Carl? No reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, go on. Well, what it is, ages ago when- So what do we understand white elephant to mean? It's- Well, some of that's useless that's like a bit of a, you know, a, 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 a you know, something that you wouldn't want around that's just, that's just stood there doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Carl. So, uh, <laughs> so years ago when, <laughs> when people used to use elephants Years more, ago, go on. More, when people used to use elephants? Yeah, more, more than they do now. Right. Um. <laughs> more than they do now! This doesn't involve a midget, does it? No, no, no. <laughs> so, um, so you know, they'd use them in the workplace and stuff. Sure, yeah, yeah, as factories. Sort of, yeah. yeah, yeah. To move stuff Tea around ladies. and that. <laughs> yeah, it's a cute already, guards. <laughs> yeah. Can't trust them with the buns, though. <laughs> 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 That's why they stopped using them. Oh right. god, go on. So there was loads of you, loads of elephants knocking about, about and the thing is, right, you couldn't if, move from. If you have a lot of something, uh -huh. you also have a lot of demic ones, don't you? you a lot, lot of what? Of, you know, sort of demicky ones, ones that aren't right, really. Demicky. Demicky. Well, you know, like it, they weren't, they weren't properly. They weren't. They weren't properly. <laughs> they weren't Sorry, but Carl, properly. what are you what, doing? Right, I'm getting to the story. So what I'm telling they you were, is, they were a bit demicky, so they weren't properly. Have you started making words up? Right. Yeah, <laughs> you Stanley Unwin, <laughs> Listen, reincarnated. Demicky. Yeah. There was a lot of albino elephants knocking about. Okay. Where? Where is this? Um, old Africa. 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 <laughs> Uh, should we say Africa? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If an answer's got a question mark at the end, I'm well, not sure. It's an either Africa or India, but I'll give you a clue. Were these elephants, do they have big ears or little ears? Um, I didn't sort of notice the size of the elephants. I noticed, what I noticed is they were white because they were albino elephants. Okay. Right? So, <laughs> that's why they're heading, I'll be no buying one of them. Okay. I'll be no buying one of them. So, <laughs> what would happen is people who didn't know what they were doing, like, you know, you get people making a mistake buying cars that are full of problems and that, back yeah. then when people were buying elephants, they'd go up to someone, say, I'm after an elephant, and the fellow would say, yeah, I've got one here for you, sure. this is a nice one. Mm -hmm. And it was all white and stuff, and it had, like, blue eyes. You should never trust a used elephant salesman. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this elephant that's white with blue eyes. Right. So, <laughs> this is um, great. So, yeah. uh, so a uh, fellow who didn't know what he was doing would buy the elephant and he'd get it back and it'd be all sort of lazy and stuff oh, and we are doing the stuff. Yeah. Mm. And he'd say, what's, what's up with this? And his mate, who's a bit of an expert with elephants, and go, oh, where have you bought that from? And he'd say, oh, I got it off that fella. And he goes, oh. All this <laughs> embellishing nonsense <laughs> he does with the story. He shouldn't have bought that. So he goes, why? And he says, it's only albino, isn't it? And he's like, what does that mean? And he said, oh, it's, it gets tired. Yeah. Um, it's not that good at doing work and that. He shouldn't it have bought it. It steals from you. But elephants back then were like a god. You know what I mean? Right. You couldn't, you couldn't say, oh, I'm sick of this, then I'm gonna abandon it or anything, okay. because ele elephants were seen as, like, pretty high up on the chain of things. So <laughs> they'd end up being stuck with an elephant, that's an albino, yeah. couldn't do much, gets tired, basically gets in the way, so they said, that's where they're saying, like, you know, but a bit of a white elephant there. <laughs> <laughs> what so, do you reckon, Rick? <laughs> I, I feel, I don't, I feel like I, I haven't been educated. I feel like I've lost something. <laughs> so at that time in my life, I can never get back. I feel like I've sort of been soiled, and I, I don't know where to start. <laughs> I'm angry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm angry. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. And all that rubbish around. Look at his little face. Well, what was that? All that <laughs> shit about a second-hand elephant salesman and his mate knew about elephants. <laughs> what is it? What are they? They had blue eyes. What are you? Well, albinos have red eyes for a start. Yeah. Well, that's it. We've run out of time. Oh, again. what? What? The, I mean, Sorry. what are you going to do about this next week? Are you going to actually do some w educating next week? And what about Rockbusters? Are you going to make the clues proper cryptic clues? Well, that's the teaser, isn't it? That's what we'll leave them with. We'll <laughs> <laughs> Will it be any good next week? <laughs> Tune in and find out on XFM 104.9. <laughs>
books coming out and stuff. You, we, I, I've never heard anyone whinge about going in with kidney stones. <laughs> I know loads of people that have kidney stones. Not like They've mine. had the, yeah, yeah, no, no, they say not like that because uh, they have. They've had the operation. I know people that had their appendix out, right, an actual under the knife operation, yeah. and he was back at work the next day, and he had a bit of a, a sore side. But you have whinged now for weeks and weeks. Everything you say, like, oh, I've had this, uh, oh, I've got to go in again. But you're still well enough to go away every weekend to see your folks or your in-laws yeah, well, or, problem. or a holiday. And, 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 and it's just like we are so, in that, you know, sometimes you've got to pull together, mate. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you say keep a diary, mm. and you said make sure you do a diary for a year. Yeah. If I didn't go and visit people and travel the world, what would I do in it? Carl, I read your diary every week. All you seem to do is spend time in a cafe, having a cup of tea and a bit of breakfast. That's the who weekend, are you, who are you constantly visiting? Anyway, let's not argue. You don't people even like your family, I arguing. thought. It's not my family, is it? Well, you don't, family. you don't but like anyone, work. why are you visiting But you say, I'm working that weekend, I'm working that weekend. We have to put, say, right, what, let's put this in first, no, you know, no, it's no. a busy Fam time. Family's important, isn't it? Yeah. You can't keep messing people But this about. is all you have to do. No, what else are you doing? doing? What other job have you got? Loads of you stuff, know. I don't want to go into what I'm doing, but I've got loads but of stuff. But all I hear is you're well, always having meetings. I know, you're always yeah. going from meetings. Yeah, I know, yeah, 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 So, no, seriously though. So, you've been on your travels, you've got, you know, you've got lots to talk about, so... Yeah, I've got to go know. in hospital again as well, haven't I, so... What's your current state with your old... Oh, well, I don't want to go on about it. Well, no, I, I mean, you you know, you've brought it up. It's you're fine, you're well enough to go away, you're well enough to go on holiday, you're well enough to visit people, you went on a train, you went to Manchester, you must be well enough, so you're well enough to do this. I went back to, uh, Bristol at the weekend, I had a bit of time off, as oh. you know, because Carl can do the work. So I know. That's, that's what I mean, yeah. so we all had a nice No, well, no, I didn't. I, I, I went to Bristol and I was working. Mm. That's all right. But well, we exactly. still visiting a place, is what I'm saying. Well, well that's a ridiculous thing to say. That's like saying a pilot doesn't work because he's visiting a place. No, because he doesn't visit. He no, doesn't you get sit out down plane. on your ass. Sometimes you hire a car so you can't be reading or, or studying. You're driving for six hours. Uh -huh. I, I went there working. We went to America. We were working. I went to Bristol. I was working. Oh, shut up. Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Getting a bit uppity. The truth hurts, Stephen. <laughs> the truth does hurt, and it's interesting yeah. that he suddenly snapped at you there. I because know. Because I wondered to myself, if it weren't for you, Mr. Ricky Gervais, what would this man, this little round-headed man, be doing right now? Fuck all, Stephen. <laughs> Fuck all. Yeah, I went back to Bristol at the weekend, and I've, as we know, we all had a bit of time off. And, um... Uh, actually, I was quite annoyed because I, uh, I passed the pub near where my parents live, and they had a band on. You know, pubs sometimes have a band on. And the name of the band, I'm disappointed that I missed them. The name of the band, Rick, was <laughs> Loose Change. <laughs> but what I like about Loose Changes is the least evocative name for a band, isn't it? It's, it's not amazing. sexy, it's nothing. It's got no kind of mood or feel to it at all. Loose, Loose Change. change. It's, it's just, it's... Uh, welcome. Rough outline. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just nothing. The checkbook stops. <laughs> <laughs> Pocket fluff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but while I was at my parents' house, they, they often, uh, you know, they keep clippings of things, you know, if, if we've been mentioned in the papers, they like to keep a record of them and stuff, because, uh, I like to show it to my grandparents, you know, and keep, a, you know, keep, keep fully abreast of things. And, uh, they, I... D you know, I managed to find a couple of them. This is what I don't know if you've heard this, Carl. It's, for people who don't realise, Carl was making a couple of little three-minute TV projects recently that were on Channel Four, and in the Sunday Times, they uh, someone's written a letter about Carl to the Sunday Times. Wow! Uh, they can send in comments and views on things they've seen, read, heard. Oh, excellent! And this is what they, someone wrote to the uh, Sunday Times: mm. Who is Carl Pilkington? <laughs> And why have I just wasted five minutes of my life listening to some of his cretinous thoughts on Channel 4? He asked, why are there so many dinosaurs on display in museums? Quotes, couldn't they just choose the best one and just show that? He summed it all up by deciding that we know too much. Somebody clearly doesn't know enough to know that this is a complete waste of airtime showing no wit, intellect or creativity. That's from Wendy Robinson in Berkshire. You can't have your critics. You know what I mean? You've got to have your critics. Of course you have. If everybody liked what you did, then you're not doing the right thing. I <laughs> you wasted five minutes, and they were three-minute wonders, so it must have felt yeah, two, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two thirds as long again. But think how an angry she must have been to have bothered writing this letter to the Sunday yeah. Times. Well, that's good. I mean, though. you really must have. It's all about getting people thinking. That's what I always say to you. As long as I'm getting people thinking about what I've said, she remembered what I said. But what, what views did you put out in these short films which you feel people perhaps should be talking about, discussing, digesting, thinking about? Uh, just stuff that was in my head that day when I was filming them. Yeah. Is it in your head now? 
Uh, some of it is. <laughs> oh, now you've remembered me what I said. Now you what? Now you've sort of told me what I said in that one. Yeah, I remember saying that. Yeah. And I, st- and I stick by it. Remember him some other stuff? Yeah. I'll tell you now, right? This, uh, yeah, if, I don't know if Wendy's, you know, listened to this. But, Almost certainly not. But listen, right? <laughs> I was saying about the, the, uh, museums, right? And how they're big and everything. And they've Brilliant. got dinosaurs all over the shop. I read right. mm. that in the, in that museum, they've got something like uh, seven million bits of stuff in there, <laughs> right? Now, when I spend two hours in somewhere, just show me the good stuff. Don't be saying we've got seven million bits, because there was a fella who a fella who opened it. Right? I did a bit of research on the museum. A fella who opened the museum up. Uh, well, what was his name? It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter, does it? What museum was it? It was the London one. Oh, the London one, yeah, okay. So he's in there and he's, he's collecting all this, you know, bits of stuff. What stuff? Just whatever's knocking about that oh, time. Right, okay. he just, it seemed like you he never searched it. He never chucked anything away. He's oh, like, right. oh, I won't put it in the bin, pop it on the shelf. Okay, right? so yeah. So he's put everything on a shelf oh, in right, the museum. Oh, yeah. Then as time well, I went think you're on, going into too much detail, but just give us the gist of it. No, but all I'm saying is, uh, he keeps everything. And if you keep everything, sometimes it'll be good stuff, right? Um, and a lot of the stuff was going missing, the good stuff. But people who set these museums up are just as crafty. <laughs> what? The fellow who found Tutankhamen, he was pocketing all sorts of fingers and stuff in his pockets on the way out. <laughs> that had rings on them and stuff. So all I'm saying is, why is she having a go? But she's hang on, wait, that, I, what's that got to do with someone pocketing? I don't understand your because, point. Because she's sort of moaning at me going, don't have a go at the museum and the dinosaurs. But no, she, but she's having a go at your fatuous you're, point. Yeah, you're absolutely uneducated, but, stupid I mean, I, point I, that you've got, you got TV time to talk absolute shit, if I could uh, that's not paraphrase my fault, Wendy. That's not my fault. If someone says they want me to do a little programme and you can do what I want, I went and did what I did. Free but, speech, innit? But it? we just gave you the chance then to defend yourself, and you just confirmed Wendy's point a thousand times over. What was all this waffle about people nicking stuff? What's that got to do with anything? Because she's having a go at me, I didn't nick but anything. But she's having a go at you for talking uh, uh, nonsense uh, that's of no consequence, which is what you just did that's then. That's not nonsense. But what was your point? Oh, Alright then, well we'll watch Wendy's little programme when that goes out. Let's <laughs> see what she's got to talk about. Sick of her. So anyway, as I say, my mother saves various clippings and things which may be of interest. This was recently in the uh, Daily Mail, in one of those kind of uh, gossip columns. Uh, Ricky Gervais's cringeworthy dance routine as managerial buffoon David Brent was undoubtedly the highlight of BBC comedy The Office. Perhaps credit for the scene should not go to Gervais, however, but his lanky co-writer Stephen Merchant. <laughs> for I hear that six foot seven inch Merchant has been attracting a great deal of female attention at the so-and-so pub in North London. Uh, until he took to the dance floor with Brent-esque results. Says my mole, most of the feminine throng looked away in embarrassment. Putting it kindly, he was rather ungainly, like a giant albatross hopping on stilts. <laughs> right, now then. I'll take issue with this, because firstly... You wouldn't be attracting female attention in the first place. Rick, if I had been, I'd have phoned the male myself. <laughs> Point A... Right, I seem to remember distinctly I was talking to one of my mates the whole night and we were discussing about the fact we were too shy to talk to girls. <laughs> so wrong there. Yeah. Point two, as you well know, if I take to the dance floor, which on this occasion I didn't, I remember distinctly not because I love to dance, I would not have been described as a giant albatross hopping on stilts because Carl has seen me dance, you've seen me dance, you know I'm a good mover. Yeah. I, just in the same way that people can't quite understand how Peter Crouch, the same height as me, yeah. is able to be so brilliant on the football field. Yeah. It's the same. People look at me when I'm dancing and they go, I don't know how that big guy is able to bust some of those kind of moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah. won two dance contests in my life. Those, yeah. those facts, those stats speak for themselves, Rick. I know, I know. I mean, you've seen me dancing, how would you describe me? It, uh, I, I, I think that you look like a... Isn't an albatross, isn't it? You look like, um... An upright lizard, right, give, having being given electroshock treatment, and I think that's a lot fairer, isn't it, than the albatross nonsense? Well, I, mm, so I'm just trying to picture that because again, I, I, was that a compliment? You were on my side, right? You were defending yeah, me. Yeah, a, a cross between a giant lizard and a, 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 a stick insect. Again, because they don't sound in, 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 straight away. They don't sound like compliments, but I'm assuming oh, you're on okay. my side here. Uh, stick insect with funny glasses. Is that? My, again, I, yeah. 
I just I thought mm, I was thinking you would perhaps be a bit touch more supportive, but these you've not really. Carl, you see me dance. What 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 are your views? Uh, it's just like a bit of weird art. <laughs> He's brilliant! That's so much better than Albatross! <laughs> I wouldn't have said an Albatross. I was looking at one of them the other day. And I don't understand what they mean by that. Because they're dying out. They say, you know, uh, <laughs> they dive in the sea. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Something happened in the brain. It went from the point we were making via an Albatross, then it just shot off. It just ping! Like a pinball. Well, let's hear it because it's going to be another good point. No, it's just saying how, um, because I've, I've never seen one, and they were saying, how would you feel if, if you never saw one again? And I was like, you know, I've got by this long without it. It's not bothered me. <laughs> but, um, but it was, point. it was just sort of saying, uh, <laughs> what they do is they dive in the sea, sort of put their head under the water, see if there's any fish knocking about, grab one, get out again, right? Yeah. Go to land. I don't know if they're designed to do that. Well, obviously they are. No, because seagulls are, because you see them floating about. Now, what's happening is, they're doing that, but getting caught in nets. Well, that's it. The net shouldn't be there. That's the point. They're totally adapted to their environment, but we came along millions and millions of years afterwards and stitched them up. It's not like people are going, well, the nets are always there. How did they evolve without getting caught in the net? We invented the net. We've only been knocking around for a few hundred thousand yeah, years. But what I'm saying is, it's that thing about animals learn by mistakes by other animals. You know, like the monkeys uh, peeling potatoes. Right. <laughs> That's never happened. They go and put nuts in the salt water to, to salt the nut. Whatever. How does that how does that get to peeling potatoes? But, uh, because in your head, they were working in a canteen. Making chips. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter what the food is. I'm just saying how they know how to sort of prepare I love food. the fact that you don't care what the fact is. When you're discussing facts, that's all that matters. Otherwise, on Mastermind, they just go, um, uh, who wrote Much Ado About Nothing? Dickens? Yeah, close enough, whatever, someone did. It, the fact is the what matters. Yeah, but with that question, that's got a straightforward answer. What I'm telling you is the way that animals work. If it's a potato or a nut, it's a foodage. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, I return you to my question as before. What's your point? What, were you, what point were you making? I'm just saying an albatross will find food. If you're hungry, you find food or you change your diet. If you don't <laughs> eat something else, you die out. Simple. Said before, if you want a pie, but they haven't got any pies, you have a pasty. Alter your diet. Mm. And an albatross Drastically. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's radical. radical. <laughs> yeah, you said. Completely change your diet. No more pies. <laughs> what are you eating, pasty? Brilliant. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to eat quiche anymore. I'm going to have a tartlet. But you, you're getting more and more sort of single-minded in your... No, single-celled. Yeah. It's not, though. In your belief that everything you say has got some kind of profound implication and that, and that no one else is listening, that we're all ignorant. All right. We're all not here's, listening to what you're saying. Here's another one. Go on. Here's something else I Oh, come on. This would be good. In series This one. would be as good as E equals MC squared. The, uh, the people aging backwards idea. Well, it's not an idea. They've done something on it, saying how... No, they haven't. A baby has been messing about with emails. <laughs> right? Right. Oh, yeah, God! A 65-year-old doesn't know how to use email. So, again, my system works. Uh, so, say if you're an old person, you're, you're not using the internet, but you shouldn't be anyway, because you should be sort of just getting used to life as an old person. When you're a baby and you're about to die, they're using the internet. I don't know what you mean, when you're a baby and you're about to die. This is if, this it, is if this was your world, idea, if it yeah. was your world. Well, let me just ask a couple Sorry, of questions. Sorry, that makes no sense at all. What you just uh, that makes no I'm sense at all. I'm just saying that my theory... You may as well have hit a walk what to saying. express that point, because my, they're... Yeah. I, the pong... Yeah. That would have made more sense. <laughs> See, this is why, more profound. This is why... More resonant. This is why Wendy's having a go, though, because you're not being open-minded. You're not thinking about... But we're being open-minded to good ideas, to sensible thought, to intellectual considerations. We're not being open-minded to this utter drivel. Yeah, but every invention is a bit... Who, who'd have thought the Frisbee would have caught on? <laughs> I don't think that can count as an invention, though. Of course it is. People are paying for it. 
someone said, I'm going to invent something. But people are paying for carrots. But they're not an invention. Because you pay for something, it doesn't mean it's an invention. No, but a man-made thing. A frisbee, it didn't grow off a tree, did it? Someone's made that and gone, I can sell this. And people are buying it. <laughs> you know, all I'm saying is, things, things change, don't they? You know, the albatross is dying out. The way, uh, like when I walked into the flat, right, we've had hot weather, haven't we? We've had a lot of flies knocking about. Now, when I was younger, I never saw flies sort of hanging about in, in gangs. <laughs> Whereas... <laughs> I don't know what world this is! Would they have little motorbikes? No, you know, just, uh, you'd sort of see one, one would get in the house, you know, my dad would kill it or whatever, but you'd never see three. You wouldn't be going, oh, which one am I going to get first and everything. They'd, they'd come in, they'd exit out of a window or whatever. Whereas I walked in on, on a bit of activity. <laughs> There's home, nothing to eat here. Right? <laughs> three flies in the flat, right? All sort of whizzing around. Right. All together, right? So I just sort of think... Oh, you know, let them be. Uh, they seem to be happy. Uh, you know, they, they're playing around with each other, right? Sat down, reading the paper, look up, right? It was like there was, one was trying to, like, have it away with, with one of the flies, and the other one was, was having a go as well. It, it turned out it was a little fly that didn't want any of the action, but two were attacking it. How could you possibly gauge that? Just by watching. That's how you learn, isn't it? You watch, you, you watch. But no, this is conjecture again. You had no idea what was going on there. No, I did. It's, it's, it's the way they were sort of jumping on it and stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm not happy with this going on, and, you know, under my roof sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> my um, house, my rules. But it's, but it's a nightmare, because it's small, you can't control it, you don't know which one's which. You might end up sort of pushing out one... That's the bad What are you you're talking out. about? I'm just saying. Why no. are you getting involved? Just because creatures are changing all the time. What are you talking about? What point are you making? I'm just saying the way that flies used to be happy go lucky <laughs> on their own, the sun's out, have a fly about. <laughs> whereas <laughs> nowadays, oh now, there was like little attacks going on. <laughs> oh god! Oh god, oh my! But how could you tell which were the two aggressors and which was the victim? How well, could this, you distinguish? This, this, was, this was the problem. I mean, all I was looking at was which one they kept attacking. And I was thinking, if I can get that one in the bedroom and then get the other Sorry. two out the window... What are you... Just breaking it up. Because uh, what sort of a person would it be to let that go on? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about! He has no feelings for anything. He doesn't care if whole species die out. That's, Why are you getting involved? Wrong. That's where you're wrong, because... I think I think more than most people. I think there's a lot of people who just go through the motions. Yeah. They do it's the same thing every day. They can do a job, but that's all they stick to. They don't think about what them flies do. Carl, What's that I've known doing? you for, I don't know, four years, and all you ever say is things like, why do we have jellyfish? No, I haven't mentioned the jellyfish today. But it's the same old shit... You look at some, you make up your own story, and then your conclusion annoys you, even though it's totally fatuous. Like I say, the man with the frisbee, what happens if, if he had a mate who said, rubbish that, he wouldn't have done it? <laughs> I love the fact that you think the frisbee is the pinnacle of invention. Yeah. I think it's amazing. No, it's an example of something that, you know, if he was on some programme where you, you know, you said, I've invented this, did go get out, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't give him time of day. To say, right, I've made this thing, it's out of plastic, you throw it about. What, what for? Well, you just chuck it about on the beach. What's the point? It was a bit of fun, isn't it? No, I don't like it. How okay, many and that was an argument with himself. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? It's a popular little thing, and I'm just saying it's easy to put ideas down. But you've never even come up with an idea as good as the frisbee, and that's saying something. I came up with a clippable mat that goes what? on a cup, and it's a, it's a good little thing. I haven't followed it through yet. A what? A clippable mat. What's a clippable mat? What a does clippable that mat that like you stick on a cup, so you, you can put your cup down on a table without having to go, oh, where's that mat? It's, it's clipped to the cup all the time. And you put the cup down wherever you want because it's got a mat on it. I think I've seen that. But why does it have Where to be haven't? clipped? No, why couldn't it just be built into the cup? Because, uh So it clips onto, you've got to have special cups. It doesn't yeah. clip onto every cup. No, but just the same way that every sauce is different. You don't say, oh, I'm sick of this sauce. It doesn't fit a mug. You, you use the source of that. I mean, I don't use sources. Just don't buy that sort of thing. But isn't a source of what you're talking about? Uh, kind of, yeah, but it's clippable. But why is the clipper, why is the clippability so important to you? 
so you don't have to keep finding the, the, the mat when you put the cup down. It's constantly clipped to the, to but the why cup. does it have to be clippable? Because that suggests it's removable. Why not just have something where it's constantly attached? What's to stop you from losing that in much the same way as you lose the coasters? Do we need this, this? Do we need a well, clippable coaster? But let's just, let's ask him like it's the Dragon's Den. Let's okay, ask him yeah. now. What? We've got money to invest yeah. on your clippable right. cup. What's now pitch problem? this idea to us. Tell how would you sell this well, idea you, to you us? You just said, uh, what was your p question then? Brilliant. So you're not listening. Let's start no, again. I am. Okay. I, I no, just... imagine you walked in. You what just is it for? In. What is it for? Is it is it is it a coaster to stop uh, the heat from the cup burning the varnish? Rick, let him explain. Or let's... is it a saucer to stop um, well, look spills? Well, look at it. Let's it let's let's have you pitch this idea to us. Just you've you've never met us before. You were investors. Tell us. Explain this to us. Sell it to us. Right. Um, we're living in a world uh, where furniture is important to people. They spend a lot of money on it, don't they, furniture? Yeah, There's absolutely. so many furniture shops out there. Yeah. All different types of wood from all over the world. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Good if something's point. come from the Amazon, mm. you don't want a coffee stain on it. No, you don't, know. Right. But we're living in a world as well mm. where people don't use saucers. What when, do you mean when they do When you go out and buy, because people... What don't... do you mean we're living in a world where they don't use saucers? Yeah, there's loads of saucers, yeah. Because I know people who buy cups singly. Right. Because there's only two people living in the flat, so you don't buy a big box. Because in a big box of, of like plates and that, you get things like, uh, you know, s uh, what's what's the plate that's above a saucer but below a plate? <laughs> I never, I... <laughs> the plate that's above a saucer but below a plate. So it's a plate, but it's below a plate. But it's a size that you sort of go, what am I doing with this? <laughs> So, uh, what would it be? A, a side plate? <laughs> Maybe. But a plate that you'd have alongside your regular dinner plate, right? Maybe. You put a bread roll on or something in a restaurant. Maybe. Yeah, okay. But, but you What's your point? What do you no, mean? Let me, this is fascinating to me. Because this is his best attempt now okay. to try and attract investment. Do you know where the, your mats are at home? I haven't got mats. Don't use them. Why not? Because uh, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I haven't got any highly polished um, uh, furniture from the Amazon. Right, Steve, have you got any sort of... I've got some coasters and I use the coasters. And do you know where they are when you need one? Well, yes, because they're always at the place where I would normally put down a mug of hot tea, i.e. Yeah. on a table or a coffee table. Right, now, do I you keep, find... If, if I had a, a highly polished table from the Amazon, I'd keep my coasters on it. Yeah, but what I'm saying now is, what happens if you get up with your cup of tea? You're a busy man, right? This yeah. is what I'm saying. We're living in a world where people are busier than Yeah, ever. go on, go on. Not everybody can sit down and enjoy a cup of tea sat in the same place. Right. You get up and you might move into another room. Um, well, you haven't got a, you haven't got a polished table in there from the Amazon, doesn't No, but you might be working on another expensive table. Oh, fine, we'll have a coaster there. That has a they? computer on. My question is this: One, does it fit all mugs, uh, or do I have to buy a special mug to have this special? Well, bit we, of can, cash? we can work it whatever way you want. We can either look at the standard size mug and say let's appeal to everyone, or we can. Get in, in touch with some mug company. How is it clipped? Just like little plastic clips that clip onto it. Yeah. And then you clip it off and you and you clean it. The dishwasher proof, by the way. I, yeah, I think I don't, I, no, but, they don't need that. But at all. why why can't you just make a mug that has something mm, built, built in, in the base of the mug to prevent it from making the mark? No, I don't. It's need only that. the heat that makes the mark, isn't it? Really. I I, I just want to say now, it's a pointless idea, um, and I'm out. Right, but. What about the idea that you've just suggested then, with the mug, with the saucer built in? Yeah. What about, will we, will we do that together? But that's not, that's not your idea, that's my <laughs> idea. Yeah, but without my idea, you wouldn't have had that. Well, but that's absurd, we're having a conversation, I've come up with an idea, now I've got the money, you, I've want, got the money, and want, I'm going to go off with that idea. Yeah, you haven't painted it anyway, and it's a rubbish idea, and you could It's not paint. rubbish, because I've just thought as well, that'll be good for putting biscuits on the side as well. <laughs> Okay, no, and that spot. means we can get rid of that plate that R I don't know By the it way, is. now this is broadcast, you can never paint this idea because it's out in public domain. Rick, 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 why don't we see if there's anyone out there who's willing to invest in this idea? Are you a mug manufacturer? Are you a mug designer? Are you someone who's got any interest whatsoever in this idea? Do you think it's a saleable idea? And, more importantly, would it be not great to have a picture of Carl's face on the map? Because it's perfectly round. Perfectly round. As well, and it, you'd scold him every time yeah. you, uh, yeah. So there'd be a certain satisfaction in that. Yeah, well if Peter Jones is listening, or that Ballantyne fella, or, uh, what's his name? Any uh, of the, uh, big uh, investors on that show, or indeed yeah. any investors anywhere, podcast at rickygervais.com. Get in touch, tell us how, how we can move forward with this brilliant new idea. Hmm? Pathetic. Oh, 
the jingle that signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary, got up and put the radio on. I listened to the story that the vicar read on Radio 2. Yeah, that could be good. He was saying how Jesus was 33 when he, when he died. He said he was more into the idea of doing a lot in your life than living for ages. This was linked to the news about the doctor who's come up with some stuff that he's been injecting himself and his wife with that makes you age better. I looked it up on the internet. It wasn't worth them doing it because they are already old looking. I don't know why people want to stay looking young. You can wear a bald head better if you're old because hairs are replaced by wrinkles. That's drivel. No, it's, it's not drivel. It's pointless. Just... A pointless entry to a diary, that. It's not because that could be a, 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 like an important bit in like world history. What? The fact that... That people, that someone's trying to make people not age. Age is good, isn't it? When you see an old person... They've been going forever. What has? People trying to age better. No, but he's talking about if you're 90, he wants people to look like they're 30. And that's not good, because how, how would the world run when that's going on? Well, I agree. But you know, it's, when people, again, it's not a revelation. If I, if, if I like chatting to old people, because they know a lot of stuff. So if I'm sat on a train and someone's old... I'm happier talking to them about... They get up and move after about ten minutes. Well, no, he likes the fact that many of them are infirm and can. <laughs> yeah, they, they have to stay there and listen to this but, one. But yeah, even that, even that means that they're getting more out of life in a way because they don't move about as much, so they have more thinking time. It is weird how that happens to you as you get closer to death. Jesus. You know, you're not working as much because you're resting and you can think back about your life and you can think, oh, I had a good one. Actually, it's not been that bad. Whereas if... But you must have started that now. Because you've been doing nothing for the past three months. Yeah, but I'm just, well, like I'm saying, it is a good thing for you to do to sort of think about what you've been doing with your days and your weeks. And, and how stuff. do you assess your life so far? With all this spare time you've had in your hands and moping around and moaning about your illness and just sitting around, right? You've been uh, introspecting, have you? Yeah. Go on then. What have you come up with? I haven't come up with anything. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I have, I have an all right life and things are changing. Oh. Keep saying that. No, but they, but you don't know how much they are changing to the point of I don't know if I mentioned the squirrel eating Mars bars, but from that, <laughs> from, from 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 that happening to monkeys opening bottles with lids on them, to it's just it's it's mental out there. It's madness what is going on, and all I'm saying is old people need to be old people. You need oldness. You need to see old people. You need to go right. They might have a solution. They've been on the earth longer. Quick, we need an answer. How old are you? I'm 32. Well, you look 78. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying! I don't know who that conversation was with! <laughs> Why you got angry, and I think you made the opposite point that you were making yeah. at the beginning. If you say you're, you're 32, you look 78. No, you were saying about it would be a problem if you were 78 and looked 32. Well, I don't know what you're saying. You came down the wrong side then. Either. You did that whole thing and you bollocksed it up again in your brain. I'm just saying, either way, you need to have people who look old. Otherwise, who's in charge? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Right. So you say, even if, so you're saying it'd be all right to make 78 year olds look 32 as long as there were some 32 year olds that look 78, as long as you've got old looking people. No, but say Can like, I tear this page out? Because <laughs> it's worthless. What I mean is, when I went to the doctors, oh. I saw the specialist, right, mm. about the kidney stones. I was, I was asking him all the straight questions. Go on. Is it life threatening? No. Uh, you know, how long am I going to be out? Couple all the rest of, days. of it. Right? Now, he As it turned out, it is life-threatening, and you've been out for three months whinging about the fucking thing. Strange. Now, he was quite old. He looked about 55, and that reassured me in a way. In a way, it didn't, because he's, he's one of them doctors who didn't open his eyes much, and I kind of thought, I hope you open I don't know what you're wider. talking about. What do you mean? What? What do you mean he didn't open his eyes much? One of those sort of doctors who's either that overworked, that he's, he, he does that, you know, when he's like, he's tired, so he's going, right, what we're going to do is, and he's doing that with his eyes shut, he's well, talking this is, like that. this is radio. I know, but I'm telling you, so you can see. But the people are meant to be listening to this. But if they can't imagine me with my eyes shut. Well, tell them you've got your eyes shut. Just right, say yeah. he had his eyes shut. Yeah, he had his eyes shut. Oh, fuck. Had he been reading this? <laughs> Bored stupid, I imagine. He's just trying to get a... Well, oh. do, do you know what I mean? I, or, I don't know if it's because he's tired or if he's that educated that some people know so much you don't even have to look at it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about! Intelligent people! Who is so educated that they don't need to open their eyes? Well, you see it, you see <laughs> like... Who is that? Uh, who's that bloke of there? Is he blind? No, he's been reading too much. <laughs>
He no. doesn't open his eyes anymore, doesn't no. he? No. Old, old people who you see wearing tweed and what have you, and they're really posh and they talk, and whenever they talk, their eyes are shut and they I open don't it. know what this observation is. I don't understand why you've never seen that. I've never seen an old, educated man wearing tweed who doesn't bother opening his fucking eyes. Steve, I don't you? know what you're talking about. But Steve, have you seen... Do you know what I mean? When people don't sort of open their eyes when they're talking to you, and it can be quite annoying, because it's like they're saying... I'm not interested about you sat there. I'm not bothered if you're listening or not. I'm saying what I'm saying because I say what I say. And but it can be quite if he, annoying. If he has got his eyes closed, he's probably just trying to absorb what you're saying and, and think carefully yeah, about probably. it so anyway, he doesn't misdiagnose I'm not, you. I'm not having a go at him. I'm like just saying he was 50 odd and I was happy that he was there telling me. <laughs> I don't know why you were watching his eyes when he was telling you about your insides. Because you can tell a lot by people's eyes. That's what I said about jellyfish. But, you know, just lines in a face tell a few stories, and I don't think we should get rid of them lines. Brilliant. Wise words. Well, that's the end of, uh, show number four in this third series of The Ricky Gervais Show. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And, of course, Carl Pilkington. All right.